Hi everyone, so this is a quick video on how to do a break even analysis question for lead insert business. So in a question, you'll generally be presented with these, the fixed costs, the variable cost per unit, forecast sales and output and selling price in Euro. And then essentially what you're gonna be having to do is produce a break even chart that will look something uh, like this. Okay, so uh, this video will talk you through how you get from the question given to you to the final answer with kind of steps for each uh, part of the graph as well. So you can see the numbers there. And um, that's what I'm gonna be showing you as we go through the video. So in this particular question, uh, the company is called CLTD. So for, it's for a company called CLTD and we're presented with fixed costs, which are 6,000 euro, variable cost per unit, which is three euro, forecast sales and output, which is 2,000 units and selling price in euro, which is seven euro. So I'm gonna move down and show you what you do first. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find something called contribution per unit. And uh, essentially like this is the portion of sales that um, is not have very, doesn't have variable costs in it. So in other words, what's left to cover your fixed costs because fixed costs have to be paid in the business um, when it is operating. So to get your contribution per unit, it's the selling price, which is in the table above of seven euro minus a variable cost, which is three euro, which leaves you a four euro for a contribution per each unit that you produce. The next thing you do then is you need to find the break even point, and this is in units. And how you do that is the fixed cost given to you in the question, which is 6,000, uh, divided by the four euro contribution per unit, which means that the break even number of units is 1,500. In other words, they'll need to make 1,500 units to break even. So we now have information that we can take and put into what we call a revenue and cost table. Now, you as a student, you have to learn uh, the headings in the revenue and cost table, in other words, how to find the points. So your table looks something like this. So you have sales and units. Now, your sales and units are always going to be your X points on the graph. You have the selling price, which is given to you in the question, and you use them together to get the total revenue. You also want to find out your total costs, and how you do that is fixed costs plus variable costs. Um, and then the last thing you'll be able to do is total revenue minus total costs, and that will give you the profit. And on your graph, you have to graph something called profit at forecast output. Again, everything in this table is going to give you the points that you need. So um, let's have a look. So when we're talking about sales and units, you have to use zero because zero is assuming that the business makes nothing at all. What will the cost be? You can see here that there's still going to be fixed costs available, which is 6,000. So you need to find out, well, if they didn't produce anything, um, what, where, what position would that leave them in? So you always start with zero. You start with 1,500, which is what you calculated above here, this 1,500. And you start with 2,000, which is the forecast sales. So if I go right back up to the top of the question for a second, you can see the forecast sales is uh, 2,000 uh, units. So that's what they think they're going to sell within the year. So you always start with zero. You always use the break even number of units, which is 1,500, and you always use the forecast sales, which is 2,000. Right, so to get the total revenue, as I said, it's units by selling price. So zero by seven is zero. 1,500 by seven is 10,500, and 2,000 by seven is 14,000. So now what we have is we've got our revenue points for the graph, which I'll talk about just a little bit later on, but they're going to be zero, zero, 1,500, 10,500, and 2,000, 14,000. As I said already, we have to find the cost next. So how you do that is you have to add your fixed and your variable costs. Well, the fixed costs given to you in the question, uh, you can see there's 6,000. We know there's 6,000 euros. So you're gonna have to pay them. Uh, they could be things like rent, for example. They're gonna have to pay them even if they made nothing. So there's 6,000 for each, um, zero, one, 500, and 2,000. You can see the 6,000 in each of the boxes there. The variable costs, again, it's units by variable costs and it's three euro in the question. So going back up to the question again at the top, you can see the variable cost is three euro. So zero by three euro, so I'll just bring this back down. Zero by three euro is zero. One 500 by three euro is four 500 and 2000 by three euro is 6000. So to get the total cost, as I said, you just add fixed and variable together. So 6,000 plus zero is 6,000, 6,000 plus four, 500 is 10, 500, and 6,000 plus 6,000 is 12,000. So now we have our cost points. Again, our X is zero, but our cost, our Y is 6,000, 1, 500, 10, 500, and 2,000, 12,000. The very last thing then you need to do is you need to find out your profit margin. So if you made nothing, 
it's total revenue minus total cost. So zero minus 6,000 is minus 6,000. For the break even, it should be zero, and it is because TR of 10,500 minus TC, total cost of 10,500 is zero. And then a profit at forecast output, 14,000 minus 12,000 is 2,000. So that 2,000 will be shown on the graph just a little bit later on. Now, you have to learn how to do that table, as I said, and it comes with practice. Just keep using the same headings, keep following the same um, layout, and with practice, you will get it, okay? So just keep following that all the time, and they're going to give you your points. So we have our X uh, axis is always going to be the 0, 1, 500, 2, 500, and our Ys are going to be the revenues and are going to be the costs. So we've got 0, 0, 1, 500, 10, 500, and 2,000, 14,000 as our total revenue lines, and 0, 6,000, 1, 500, 10, 500, and 2,000, 12,000 as our costs. Okay, so the first thing you do, you can see by me putting the number there, is that you put your heading across the top. And as a Leaving Cert student, you should always be putting these on graph paper. In the Leaving Cert exam itself, you will have access to graph paper, so make sure that you use it. Uh, on the left-hand side there, you've got your revenue and costs in euro. So, um, you know, that's your different points that you found out, your your um, total revenue numbers, your total cost numbers. And on the bottom then, you've got the output units, which is like your zero, your one five hundred, your 2,000. Now, in uh, 2016, they did ask you in the Leaving Cert to plot a second um, point of for break even. So, when you're doing these, it's a good idea just to kind of go over a little bit more in terms of the numbers and up a little bit more as well. Don't have it squashed it together and give uh, the, the kind of continuity between the points that it's the same number of boxes that you're skipping between them. So, first thing you do, as I said, is you put your headings in. Now, the next thing you do is you draw what we call the fixed cost line. Now, it's just a straight line. Uh, across the graph. So you go to where your fixed costs were, which was in this question, 6,000. And all you do is you go to 6,000 on your graph, 6,000 euro, and you just draw a straight line across, and that's your fixed cost line. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put in our total revenue points, in, which we've worked out to be 0, 0, 1, 500, 10, 500, and 2,000, 14,000. And our total cost points, which we've worked out to be 0, 6,000, 1,500, 10,500, and 2,000, 12,000. So we'll see these now uh, on the graph. So our revenue is in the red there. You can see it's zero, zero. You can see that there. 1,500, 10,500, you can see there. And uh, the 2,000 and 14,000, which is just there. Okay, so just draw a straight line up. You've marked those points, draw a straight line up. And then for co total costs, it's uh, zero, 6,000. 1,500, 10,500, and uh, 2,000, 12,000. So again, just mark those points and draw a straight line across. And what you'll see there is that both of them have, which should happen always on the graph, both of them have hit the same points, which is the 1,500, 10,500. So that's really us showing our break even uh, points. Now, obviously, we're going to have to label and mark it in a moment, but just that you're familiar with, they should always hit uh, if you've done this correctly. Okay, so moving down now. What I get my class to do is I ask them to draw a dotted line up where it hits and label it as a break-even point. So they both hit at 1, 500, 10, 500. So you can see here, I'm getting a line up and a line across, and I'm clearly labeling it as the break-even point where they intersect or where they meet. And um, that would be the step number five. So the next thing I do is I want to plot the um, profit at forecast sales. So what I do here is I go to the 2000 and essentially what I'm doing is I'm drawing a straight line up at the 12,000 and at the 14,000. So in the previous question, it's basically where those points are there. I'm just drawing a straight line the whole way up and that's actually going to give you a lot of information. So if you draw it like that dotted line up, so you're going to draw a line up, and go across where you got your 14,000, and here go across where you got your 12,000, you now have that gap there, that space in there of 2,000 euro, which is what you call your profit at forecast output. So different distance between 12,000 and 14,000 is 2,000. And if you go back up to the table for a second that you did earlier on, I'll just go up to the very first one that we did. Skipping past all the steps here. You can see there 
the 2000. That is the profit at forecast. This is your forecast sales. That's your profit at forecast output or forecast sales of 2000. Just by putting that dotted line in and putting your, your points across, you have now clearly illustrated that on the graph that their profit at a forecast output of 2000 euro exists. Okay, so going back down to our points again, all you're doing is you're drawing up a dotted line and clearly labeling it. Okay, so where those two points are, the 2000 over to the 12,000, this is your forecast. Remember your forecast was 2000, so up and across, up and across, and that area in there shaded in is your forecast sales, your profit at forecast output from your forecast sales. And number seven, what we do now is our margin of safety. So our dotted lines have shown us so much information then. So the distance between the 2000 and the 1500 is 500 units, okay? So number seven, our margin of safety, just clearly label it inside there. The distance between your forecast sales and your break-even number of units you clearly showed it there on the graph. The important thing is then that you label it as the margin of safety. So if you looked at what we started with in the question at the top when I showed you an image, by following the steps that I have here now, you've essentially comp completed that break-even chart. You've done everything that the examiner has asked you to do. And by doing that, guys, you would get four marks. Now, what I would say is for your own practice and stuff, put the numbers in. But as you get more comfortable doing it, maybe don't include those numbers anymore. Just have the points uh, as so. So that's how you do a leaving cert business break even chart. And just coming down a little bit more, you should also know these two things in an exam. If it asks you to explain the term margin of safety, a key definition when looking at break even analysis, it's the level by which sales can fall in a business before it starts to lose money. So if we look at the chart again, 1,500, if they produce anything below that, they would start to lose money because that's their break even point up there. So you've shown it on your graph. If they went below the 1,500, the level at which sales can fall, um, this is their forecast, this is their break even. If it went below that, the level at which sales can fall, the business will start to lose money. So that's what the term margin of safety means. If they also ask you limitations of break even analysis, well, you would say things like, you know, the chart assumes the fixed costs are constant. Remember, it's a one straight line across, number two on the graph. However, this can change for businesses. Like, for example, if they had a rental increase or something like that, it would push the fixed costs up. It also assumes a business sells all of its stock, but that's not always the case. Uh, remember, pubs and restaurants were left with obsolete stock due to COVID and they couldn't get rid of it, so they couldn't sell everything. Or perhaps assumes a firm sells all its output at one price, but it doesn't take into account uh, maybe having to offer discounts um, or even increased prices and in things like maybe things like hand sanitizer or something like that during COVID that, you know, prices of those because demand was so high went up. So essentially, guys, that's how you do.